سلام على أهل بنادر مجد في العلا نسب طاهر سلام على أهل بنادر مجد في العلا نسب طاهر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته another episode of the Nadir Factor and alhamdulillah today we managed to get our guest very dear guest Abu Wahab Sulaiman Husayni he is the grandson of the last Omani Wali in Mahdisho during the time when Mahdisho Markabarawa was under the rule of the Oman Sayyid Bertash in Zanzibar. Um, his grandfather was the Wali in the Sheikh. His grandfather um, Wali Sulaiman bin Ali al Busaidi. May Allah have mercy on him. Anyway, Abdul Wahab, Abdul Wahab, how are you doing? I'm fine, brother Abdurrahman. And again, thank you really for giving me this opportunity to talk to you and brothers and sisters who are watching. Welcome to the Nadir Factor. Thank you. You you are in Oman right now, isn't it? Yes, I'm I'm in Muscat, Oman. That's correct. Okay, give my salam to Sultan Haytham in Ontario. Inshallah. Inshallah, I will if I get the chance to see him. Yeah, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, yeah, that's I'll make sure I mention Banadr Amman. Yeah. Tell him, tell him he's welcome to Barawa. He has houses there that belongs to him, his family. Absolutely. It's, uh, inshallah, this is you know one of the channels of establishing our uh, sort of uh, roots and culture and traditions that have gone back, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years. So the continuation, and hopefully, inshallah, we, we will make sure that you know it comes back with 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 the energy that it has. Inshallah, of course. Anyway, before we begin, let's tell us brief about you yourself. Okay, I mean, my name is Abdul Wahab uh, bin Suleiman bin Muhammad bin Suleiman bin Ali bin Qasim al Busaidi. And yeah, I've been here in Oman uh, since uh, uh, mid 80s. And uh, I've worked for the oil industry as a geologist uh, in, in, in a shell slash uh, uh, Oman company known as Petroleum Development Oman. I retired about five years ago. So, I mean, you know, my, my, my sort of uh, speciality is mainly in geology. And for the last 10, 15 years, I've developed a new uh, sort of, you can call it a hobby, but it's, it's also a, another science field, and it's astronomy. So I, I, I have a telescope and I give lectures. I was even in England in 2019, where I gave lectures about astronomy and uh, the related fields. So when it comes to history, I'm not that that uh, that much any advanced, but I will try to share with you uh, the the little that I know. And yeah, so I have lived. You mentioned early on Mombasa. I I, I spent a few years in Mombasa from seventy six to to nineteen eighty four, uh, and uh, so I speak Swahili. I do, and Alhamdulillah Arabic. And uh, if I might learn some some Barawa as as we go on, Inshallah, it's not hard because. Yeah. It has a uh, Swahili words in it, so it's not difficult. Um, you said you mentioned astronom astronomy. As I saw on your profile, you were doing something about stargazing. Tell me about stargazing. Yes. Uh, well, stargazing is 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 uh, is is a phenomena that has been around for you know thousands of years. But uh, after Islam and after the Quran, once our Prophet Muhammad was was sent with with this uh, beautiful book, the Holy Quran. In it, there were so many verses that talk in detail about the cosmos, the universe, the stars, uh, the planets, the celestial bodies in general. And, you know, during the Abbasid period, in, in, in the early period of Islam in 7th and 8th century, uh, the House of Wisdom was established in Basra, where telescopes were built and people like Al-Khawarizmi, Ibn Sina, and so many others. You know, they, they, they went very deep in astronomy. And uh, to this day, uh, we, we use a lot of their knowledge and, and terminologies as well as even the basic knowledge. about. So astronomy or stargazing is literally going on at night and trying to understand uh, the, the, the stars and how they move. And what the, because we are part of the universe. So it's, you can consider this like, like Ibad, a contemplation, a contemplation. And... Uh, and uh, remember in the Quran, we have surah called, uh, you know, Shams. We have surah called Al-Qamr. We have surah called Al-Najm. We have, so it, it is part of our, not only religion. And uh, and by the way, in, in, in the land of Somalia, 
especially in the south, this is the best place to observe the night sky. Um, yeah, what's, what, so you spend your night, spend your research doing stargazing in the night, isn't it? And do you do it like in the desert or somewhere, is a special place or is it just in your home? Or? No, well, we have to drive out of the city because, you know, the light will, will really cause a lot of distraction. So we, we like, uh, you know, I just came from Salala uh, just a few, two, three days ago. So we went to a place called Sha'at, close to the border of Yemen. It's totally dark and it's a beautiful place to, to do stargazing. So you have to stay away from big cities. So the darker the area is, the more stars you will be able to see. Yeah. And, you, you know, and uh, we, have, we have so much to study when it comes to the universe. So the, the impact it has on us is very direct. And it is, uh, it, it, you know, so the more we understand it, uh, the more we prepare ourselves yeah, and in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, not only in the past, you know, if you ask me, what do we benefit from this? You know, Allah Ta'ala says, And in another ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, you know, about the stars, فَوْلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِعِ النُّجُومِ وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ And yani swearing by a star is a mighty thing. A star explodes. And, you know, the temperature inside the star could reach up to 30, 40 million degrees Celsius. We ourselves are made from, you know, elements that resulted from an explosion of a star. You know, things like iron and potassium, magnesium. All this stuff came from the stars and not from Earth. Because you will need very, very high temperature to, uh, to create such elements. That's very good, yeah. And you also mentioned earlier about the history of Sinna. Um, a lot of the Arab geographers and the Persians, they contributed so much in this knowledge, this field of knowledge and history. It's very interesting as well. And now that in this day and age, the technology is very evolving. It makes it easier for your work, isn't it? Yes. Every day you're learning. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Anyway, let's move on now about exactly, exactly giving us in yeah, okay. Let's talk about your yeah. grandfather, Alam Wali Suleiman. Yes. Because he was he used to be a commander in Zanzibar, isn't he? An army commander. And yeah. So basically, my great grandfather Al Wali Suleiman bin Ali uh, bin Qasim Al Busaidi, as you as you correctly mentioned, he was a commander of the army in Zanzibar. And then uh, what happened is that Said Bargas, you know, seeing his leadership qualities and seeing his strength in managing and you know. And also, at, at, uh, he, he also played a role as a judge because he, he was highly educated. He, he read so many books. And my father told me that even in, in, in Banadar, uh, at his place, he had up to 10,000 books. So he was, he was a very knowledgeable person. He will get books from Egypt, from Baghdad, and so on, you know, the, the, the delivered to his house. So uh, he was appointed as, as, as a wali was a governor in, in, in Banadar or Mogadishu or Somalia and or the southern part of uh, uh, Somalia as we know it now. Uh, and uh, he, he stayed in that position for a number of years. And, you know, during his time, a lot of prosperity, a lot of... Uh, that was literally an extension of the Sultanate of Oman, starting from, you know, Zanzibar to Mbasa, Malindi, Lamu, Pate all the way going up north to Kismayu, Marka, and ending up in, in Mogadishu or, or, or Hamar or, or Banadar, as you might call it. Uh, it was an extension. Uh, and, and this area was quite rich. You know, it was a stopover from any ship that was coming from Asia, especially the Arabian Peninsula. It will stop in Somalia because if you look on the map, that's almost halfway before you go down Southeast Africa. So they will stop to, to re-sort re of get, you know, uh, logistics, things like, you know, I, either fuel or even uh, food, whatever. So it was an important port. So the, 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 the Sultan of Amman thought this is, will be a great opportunity to, uh, to establish, uh, you know, a, a government there. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my great grandfather ruled and, uh, and it was, it was a period known of peace and harmony and prosperity. And also we have to mention that you know, that, that part of the land, you know, Ibn Battuta visited it in 1331. 
And he mentioned that there was a lot of trade going on. There's a lot of commerce. People traded in textiles, in leather, in, 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 and you name it. So it, it was a wonderful place. And inshallah, you know, we hope to see it coming back in the future as it was. Of course. And even, even today, your um, great grandfather, his building is still in Chingani. It was a garista. He, uh, he made it into a museum now. And anyway, this question yeah. of Barao, um, is there today, is there any Omani people living in Banadir, you know, or, or vice versa in Oman? Is there a lot of communities there in Banadir region? Of course, definitely. There are people living in Banadir, in Barawa, in Marka, in Kismayu, in, in, in Mogadishu, and uh, from, they come from different tribes. Like you, There are people related directly to me, and my cousins, they, they still live in, 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 in Mogadishu. And when you go down south to, to Marka or Kismayu, or the Barawa areas, there are people from the related tribes, the Bakri tribes, the Alawi tribes. And the list goes on and on. So here in Oman, of course, the the the, the, the Omanis of, of uh, who were born and raised in and studied even in Somalia uh, moved here to Oman in 60s and 70s. And today, some of them became Walillah, Alhamdulillah, Shukur. They reached the cabinet level, being appointed as ministers. One of them was a non-minister here in Oman. May Allah Taala grant him health. He's still alive. He retired a few years ago, so he was born, raised in Somalia. And there, there are very prominent families here, the al Kiyumi family, who have become prominent business people in the electronic business. And there are so many. So in both sides, as you said, vice versa, whether in Oman, of people who, are, who came from uh, Banadr or Barawa or Kismayu of Oman origin, uh, who are here established. And, you know, that trade mentality that they have been blessed with, this acumen of, of being having the courage to take risk and do business, it runs in the blood of, of that area. So they are known to be tradespeople who, who are very courageous. And uh, so they are in, in Oman as well as in, in the southern or part of Somalia to this day. That's true, yeah. Um, we, you, Oman and the Nadia, we were very connected and united one day. Yes. All the yes. organization happened. And this relation is slowly drifted away, even though the cultural impact. Yes. There. Do, you, do you see a, a revive or a return of this connection or this our unity bonding again or strengthening? By all means, absolutely. Uh, you know, as far as I, I, I know, uh, there are also, uh, you can say, strategies being put in place here in Oman to reestablish uh, that uh, route or route that 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 existed in such because it will benefit all. It's, it's not only for the benefit of Oman and and and, and Banadir area, but it it is a common uh, sort of uh, interest. So it will definitely come back because remember that part of the world at one time was literally uh, you can say even feeding at some stage. To be honest with you, let's face it: Arabia is a desert. It is mainly, and we rely mainly on 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 deaths and mainly on on uh, little of farm. And and you have to remember that there's very little water here. So at one point, the, those areas were, were, were the, the superpowers, the rich, because Allah Taala had blessed them with a lot of natural resources like farming. You have a famous river not far from where you are, where uh, Mogadishu is. Is it uh, what Shabella? Can you remind me the river's yeah. name? Yes, yeah. So the, the, the agriculture, the the the, the, the livestock, uh, you know, and everything from uh, Somalia that w was delivered directly to this area was 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 uh, beneficial to to us uh, two hundred years ago, three hundred years ago, and to this day, that business is still exists. But we would like it to flourish even more, and we would like it to to, to you know. Uh, for uh, the tradesmen and the commerce people and, uh, and even politicians, why not? They, 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 they can come and uh, uh, revive it and bring it to its, its, to its peak. So, uh, yeah, there's no reason to stop it. Yeah, that's Inshallah, we'll we will return to those days. But, you know, in Zanzibar, mm. um, earlier this year, I think it was late last year, when Beit al the, the house, yes, was, yes. when it collapsed, yes. I was very delighted to hear the news that Oman government they offered to 
to repair it and they were even to fund it and to control and to build it up. Yeah. This was very good news because yeah. it shows that Omar Alhamdulillah. They're still interested but Alhamdulillah. They want to help as well the history that they left behind. This is yes, like, yes. And you know in yeah. the, you have till today we have a lot of like some of the portraits that are from Oman. Like you know the, some of the food like you know halwa. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, halwa, very famous. Yeah. Do, you know Oman, or yeah. do you guys still eat it? Oh, yes, I mean halwa is I, I don't know who introduced it to I'm not I'm not really so it could have come from, from that part to Oman or the other way around. I'm not in a position to, to specifically mention where halwa originated, but halwa is a, is a major thing here in Oman. It's part of our culture, and I'm sure it's part of the culture too there. So not only halwa, but look at other, the, the other food that I've watched you know, d- during the last few months uh, on Twitter, Brother Azhar, or whoever is, is posting uh, you know, stories from th- that area in Banadar, and uh, so the, we share a lot with us. It's cultural, musical, food, dress, as you put it, your own this, that. And if you look at your ulamas, like Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Umar, and so on, in those old days, the Salatin, they were wearing the Omani uh, dress. They had imama, they had bish, they put on khanjar. I've seen the old photos. So our, our uh, sort of what, what makes us uh, common is, is not limited to, to, to food, to, to, to dress, uh, to culture, and, and you know, even to arts and music and crafts. So, and we, we are so happy that we, we associate ourselves, you know, from uh, that angle. It's amazing, yeah, very true. And even um, the Swahili language, is this still spoken in Oman? Yes. This- Pure, pure. Absolutely. I mean, Swahili is widely spoken, and inshallah, I, I personally extend invitation to you. Uh, and I've asked Azhar, I told him, you know, if you come to Oman, you need not to go to a hotel, you will be our guest here, and I'll make sure I show you all parts of Oman. So, Swahili is spoken very, very widely, really, because uh, I would I would even say it, it could be after Arabic and English, it's the third language in Oman. So many people speak it and uh, they're proud to speak it because it, it keeps our culture with East Africa very, very close. And hopefully يعني, it will strengthen, you know, to show that Oman is part and, you know, parcel of that part of the world. Yeah, so what do you know about, because you mentioned Banadir, uh, but... Yes. You, you, you've never been there before, isn't it? No, sadly, I've never been to. I've been to Mombasa, to to the the furthest I went was you know to to Malindi. I did not even reach Lamu. So I, I've been to Kenya, to Tanzania, to Zanzibar, to but not not to to uh, Banadar. But inshallah, it is it is in my uh, plan to go. Bismillah. Inshallah. And do you also do you still see that link to Swahili culture? Do still do you still see like do you see do you still see yourself at home whenever you visit these cities, Lam, Malindi, Mombasa, or has it been has it changed so far? No, I, th- I think n- nothing much has changed really. The culture is still there, and the hospitality, the friendliness, and you know the, the traditions. The, I mean, in terms of changes, maybe you see many more roads, more buildings, and the population has maybe doubled or tripled, but the, the principles are still there. So I, 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 I regularly visit and, uh, yeah, nothing much has, uh, has changed. It's, it's, I mean, especially the, 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 the buildings that stand there after two or three hundred years, they're beautiful to look at. And, and you know, it reminds you how, how our great grandfathers uh, built, built up cities from scratch and they're still standing. Allah, if, if, I don't know, you mentioned that you've been to Mombasa, right? I've been to Mombasa. So, have you been to Forodani, Kibukoni area? I've been to, um, you know, Kenyagani. Um, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, the Forodani and Kibukoni area, or they call them Njiwakali, or Old Town. And if you come here to Masqad, it's like copy-paste. They, there is so much similarity that... Most of the buildings and the architecture and the design, they look so much uh, the same. So, and the influence is, is from, from Omani. So, the, 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 yeah. So, Oman, by the way, is in, in, especially with the current changes that we're witnessing in the world, 
you know, people just suddenly leaving culture and tradition. Oh man, we still observe our traditions very, very strict. For example, when it comes to Eid, everybody will go together as, as families. They will slaughter a goat or maybe a sheep or a camel even and make, you know, what we call mashakik or maybe get halwa and pray together. So the, we, we, we take our uh, tradition and culture very seriously. Yeah, you're right. So we're, we're proud of it and we want to keep it. And we, I, you know, we, we try very hard to pass it on to the generation. Santu Aman, inshallah ta'ala, Abdurrahman, you are more than welcome to come anytime you want. We will welcome you from the airport. I will show you around. And uh, what we are proud is we still put on our, our clothing. People still put jambia. They call it in some era, but here we call it khanjar. And uh, we still maintain uh, that fabric of society, you know, because that's what keeps us together. Um, I, I, I saw an interview with you one day. It was the 50th anniversary of Oman. And I saw how yeah. everyone was happy and everyone was proud. So how, what does it mean yeah. to many people every year we celebrate this anniversary, isn't it? Yeah, you mean the anniversary of the National Day? Yeah. Yeah, it, it means a lot to us because, uh, you know, when uh, the Sultan Qabus, uh, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy on his soul, he took over in 1970 uh, in July. Uh, you know, he, he promised his people that he will build it. He will, he will, you know, bring uh, back the, the the glory of Oman. And the, because at some, from at one point, things went down. So we call this period a nahda, or, or, or you can call it, uh, I, I think, a period of uh, uh, prosperity came on. So one of the things he, one of the speeches he made, he said, all Oman is were residing, whether in Africa or in Europe or in Asia, please come back here to Oman and help us build this country. And from that time on, every year, you know, November 18th, it took over in July, but November 18th is a national day. So people will put on, you know, flags and and uh, get together and celebrate and, you know, rem remind ourselves that we are part of this country which has puts us together. And it makes us, in a way, a little bit I would say uh, even different and special because we maintain our identity. We have refused to copy, uh, you know, uh, others, especially that that do not meet our, uh, you know, identity and our our culture. So, yeah, this is what happens every year. This is amazing and it's very beautiful. I wish and I hope that this culture and yeah. this this um, consistency it stays forever. Mm -hmm. Inshallah, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. I mean, I think it's very late there in Oman, so I don't want to... It's okay. Especially yeah. on Monday, everyone's tired as well, but Abu Wahab, has been a pleasure to speak to you, to see, to learn from you as well about Oman, the link you had, mm. and I wish you the best in yeah. Oman. I wish the, I wish the best oh, thank for you. Oman as well. You have a long life and prosperity and peace there. Amen, Amen, Amen. To finish off, finish with about the Nadir factor even. Well, well, I, first I would thank you again and all who are contributing to this uh, channel. Uh, it's uh, Banader Wiki, you said, right? Banader Wiki is the website. Bana uh, okay, it's the website. Banader Factor. Well, it's, it's an excellent uh, initiative, really. I mean, people, uh, with you, you are young, but you have this uh, charisma and enthusiasm to maintain uh, your identities and your tradition, Allah, you cannot be more proud than this. And you know, you will you will inherit it. Inshallah, pass it on to the generation after the generations. So I would like to thank all of you and for this opportunity. And let's say, Inshallah, this is the beginning and not the end of our yeah, and continued effort to to communicate, to to talk, to meet physically. As I said, you're welcome here in Oman. And when I come to UK, Inshallah. Next time, I'll make sure I visit you. Bi'idhanillah. Inshallah. Also, I'd like to also thank Akhar for facilitating us and making us meet as well. He's the one arranged. Uh, he's a great man. Azhar, uh, if you see at the back of me here, I have my great-grandfather's picture that I got from him. I don't know. If, is it visible? I can see. I can see vaguely. Uh, well, I'll bring it there. He's the one who sort of, yeah. <laughs> So I got this uh, from Azhar, yeah? 
So he's the man who got me this picture. <laughs> so Azhar, Azhar, uh, please my regards to him. And inshallah, we'll meet one day. Inshallah, we all meet one day. And wassalamu alaykum. Ameen. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله جزاك الله خير أحسن السلام عليكم رجالاتنا جند ساهر سواحل لا كنز ظاهر سلام الله سلام الله سلام على أهل بنات